So now the painting is bone dry. Um, ideally, leave it dry naturally, but if you need to use a hairdryer, use it very gently and from at least, you know, sort of 10 inches away, and then that'll dry the sky. I'm going to work now on this, the distant hill there. So again, I'm going to wet the paper. And I'm not too worried if it overlaps with the second, so there's a first passage of mountain and a second one. I'm not worried if the, the moisture goes over the line of the second ridge because as you can see the second ridge will be a darker line anyway. We'll be going dark down to pale in that sort of valley and then dark down to pale in this valley. So that's fine, we can just let it run and it won't matter. So I'm just moistening the ridge really carefully, being as accurate as I can, because the paint will only go where the moisture is. So I'm just using a size three round brush to do this. And there we are. So that's, that's that little section moistened. And again, if I can just show you there, that, that's the sheen that you need on there. You don't need it wetter than that. If you have it wetter than that, it'll be just too runny and you'll have no control at all. So I'll be tipping it uh, in a sec, just keeping it moist, keeping all the section moist. Quickly mix up now my distant hill sort of colour, which will be sap green, a speck of French ultramarine blue, and a little bit of burnt umber. So that's the colour of the hill. Perhaps a little bit more sap green in there. Okay, so that's it. And I'm just going to add a few droplets of water that are already on the palette, just to dilute it down a little bit more. And then I'm going to tip my board. And then start, again with a size 3, start at the peak, you know, at the ridge, on the ridge. Continue all the way along the ridge. Just filling in under some of those peaks just to make it a little bit stronger and then I'm going to add some water to that mix now. So I'm putting say two brushfuls of water in there to dilute it down and then run that up into the first darker wash okay. Then finally another say two brushfuls of water to dilute it down even further so it's very dilute can you see that so yeah very dilute now and then brush that in and so that's now gra gradually coming down darker from the top and if you feel that the ridge will be too pale you've still got the opportunity to, to come back in with a slightly uh, darker mix very quickly so it was sap green, French ultramarine blue and some burnt umber. You can just redo the ridge in places, you know, if it's looking a bit too pale. So I'll just drop that in because that peak is really quite dark. I'll drop it in and taper it away along the ridge and say this one, this is darker as well. And then you can see it's flaring and running down, okay. So I'll just let that creep, because watercolour continues to move and change, you know, min seconds and minutes after you apply it. What you can do as well, you can see that sheen, see the sheen is still on there? You can hold it at a vertical like this just to let it run that way. Give the paint a few minutes for the momentum to, to, to 
to take to get going and then tip it this way just let it move because then that darker ridge that you put in will blend sideways as well as coming down more gradually if you have a dark blob coming down just rinse it away with a moist brush like that so that you've got no sort of you know ugly tide marks coming in to the next section can you see that I've just rubbed them away with a moist brush and I'm just going to leave it at that um, let me just show you that sheen there there you can see it's still moist and so working wet into wet but it's not runny wet that's the key with watercolors just getting that moisture right okay so I'll stop there and then we'll, we'll work on the Nira mountain okay okay we've dried this ridge of mountain now and so we need to wet this next one so again small brush or actually I could use a slightly slightly larger brush when I get into the main part of the mountain but for the ridge um, I'll use this size 3 so that I can be really accurate and keep that water within the boundary shape. Again, I can wet over the dark trees because they will be, you know, a different tone completely to the rest of the mountain. So it doesn't matter about those. So I'm wetting the ridge of this nearer mountain now. Going as tightly as I can to the pencil line. I mean, ideally, if you're doing this at home, you could rub the pencil lines out a little bit more so they're not so they're a bit more faint. I've got them dark so that they pick up on the camera. Okay. So now I'll go to a size six brush now because I'm into the main body of the mountain and I want to get more water on more quickly. And I'll even paint down past the farmhouse and past, let me just zoom in a little bit, past the you know, ridge that the farmhouse is sitting on and the one in front. This is again, these will be stronger and different colours and so it doesn't matter if we overlap with those at this stage. So that's really nice and moist in there but it's not soaking wet. This is the key thing. Let's just go past, I want to go past this ridge of trees and past this line so that if any of the mountain colour bleeds down we'll get a soft, almost invisible veil of it, it won't matter. So let's go for our, our colour again, so it was sap green, I'm mixing a bigger, bigger puddle now because I've got a bigger area to cope with, sap green, French ultramarine blue. And some burnt umber. Because as you can see, the mountain there is it's almost black, but then it fades beautifully to this sap green, and then there's a pale bluish colour in the bottom, sort of a misty area, which will be similar in colour to our sky. Okay, so there'll be a bit of sort of repetition in colour there. So let's go for the dark. First, I'm just again going to drag in a few more droplets of water that are on my palette just to make sure I've got enough color um, moisture for it to flow on. And again, let me show you that that's the sheen you want. Don't have it wetter than that. Don't have it so that if you tip your board on a diagonal as I'm doing now, that a bead of water would run off. Just wait until it's soaked in just that little bit more. And then you'll have so much more control, but you're still painting wet into wet. So I'm starting at the, you know, the peak, pushing the colour right up. I'm making some applications wider and some thinner, as you can see. Okay. 
so that there's a bit of you know um, irregularity and it looks hopefully a bit more natural right so there I should actually go to a size 3 brush to apply this on the, the tips but I'm just managing with the size 6 for now okay so I've got some colour all on let me just zoom in there and show you how that's bleeding beautifully already it wouldn't bleed like that if you hadn't wet the mounting piece first. You can do a graded wash, you know, on dry paper. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just if you want a different look, if you want a softer look, then it's best to wet the paper first. So I'm now adding... a brush, two brushes of water to my mix, okay? And I'm going back in now to the edge of what I've painted before and encouraging that down and diluting it. Then I'm going to rinse this brush again, rinse it, add some more water to the mix again, so two more brushfuls as I say, and it's getting more and more dilute. So let's just introduce that to the bottom of the veil of colour as it's creeping down the mountain and as you can see it's, it's getting paler and paler and paler. Last of all, I want to introduce some of that pale Windsor Violet and French Ultramarine Blue mix, which is there on the palette. So I've got a clean brush. I'm going to pick that up, perhaps just a touch more violet, literally a smidgen of the blue. And I'm going to drop that in right at the base over the farmhouse, don't worry about the farmhouse. And let that run. And again, if I've got a, a tide mark starting here, just take a, a, a clean size 6 moist brush and just pick up that colour and blend it in to the near sort of hillside. So that gets rid of that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to Pick my board up. Can you see that sheen there? That's what you want. See, it's all moist. It's consistently moist. Each, all of that passage has the same moisture in. So now we can tip it. I'll turn my camera on vertical like that. Let it run that away. Then I'll tip it upside down. Sorry, that's my phone going off. Just tip it back this way so that the blue from the the, the, the base of the valley has a, uh, comes up a bit, it's very pale. And then tip it this way. So it runs down this way. And all, doing this helps all of the colour blend very softly without using my brush. Okay, so, so no brush strokes are going in there to interfere with the look of, you know, lush grass um, or mountain... Uh, the mist in the mountain and as I've been talking to you you can see it's, it's it's still moist it'll dry in the next few minutes so quickly before it dries completely let's just go in with a size 3 brush and add a bit of a stronger uh, colour so the same colours again, the sap green, burnt umber and the French ultramarine blue. Let's go in, can you see it's quite dilute, and pop some of that on the peak, just to sort of emphasise the darkness of the peak a little bit more in places. So along the ridge, in places there. Just a final little push. You need to do this quickly while it's still moist enough, okay? And then you, with a moist brush, this is a size 3 moist brush, you can then encourage it down a little bit. Keep rinsing each time so that the dilution of everything is the same. Rinse 
and then let it let it run down there okay so that's a bit stronger now and I'm going to let that dry naturally okay see you in the next section so now both the distant hills are bone dry okay and before we proceed any further I'm just going to add some shadow uh, areas on the right hand sides and in some places on the rim to indicate the light source as you can see from the original photograph if I just pick this up the cast shadow from the buildings there is coming off to the right okay this cast shadow and obviously you know you can see the actual light streams coming in from the left hand side so the this side of the mountain will be darker and we'll have some darker passages there as well so let's get those in now okay so we'll be painting these in a dilute wash wet on dry wet on dry but I'm going to have a, a moist brush at the ready a size 3 moist brush so I've, I've, I've moistened and I've flicked but don't write, wipe it in a flannel just keep it moist like that then let's just get a stronger a bit more of that uh, strong mix we used for the mountain uh, the mountains so with sap green some French ultramarine blue that's a bit too much blue let's go back to the green pull it back to green I'm just looking at my mountains just sort of trying to gauge it a little bit more burnt umber as well okay now that's definitely again just get some scrap that's definitely you know a few tones darker than what I've got already so what I'm going to do is just drop in some small shapes and then moisten them from the other side and bleed them down and taper them away across the ridge like that if I zoom in on that for you rinse your brush again rinse it and flick it then work a little area of moisture under the dark mark you've made and then touch into it and just let that bleed down and taper it away finely rinse again moisten under the area and touch into it and keep going like that so that we've got a few little you know darker peaks there that's a little bit hard so i'm just going to soften it away a little bit more okay and if you find you're getting a tide mark further down as i am there just go into it once more with a moist brush and blend it away further down into the dip between those two all right so finally i'm going to pick up some more of that color with a size three brush one more time and just drop it in for a final bit of dark there okay so zooming out now it's giving us a little bit more contrast okay so same again I'm going to do the same thing with the larger peak now okay so I rinse my size three brush to be at the ready rinse it and give it a flick then the shadow colour, let's mix a little bit more. Sap green, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue. The dilution is sort of like thin, thin cream, I'd say. The trouble with watercolour is explaining just how thin is thin and just how thick is thick because everyone's got different ideas about that haven't they okay so basically if I pick my brush up it's not dripping off there but it's moist enough to give a nice broad stroke like that so the color now on this side let's get some shadow in all on this right hand crescent 
and some of these um, areas as well. Straight in with a moist brush, soften that. All on the outline, the, the outer edge of that passage I just put in. And then any hard lines that are forming, just take a moist brush to them and let them bleed away. Okay. I mean, you could, you could go on and on with this, you know, add it, adding a lot more dark and fussing with it. And I would if I was just doing it for myself, but for, for a video, there's not enough time to, to get everything in without the video becoming over long. But you get the idea. Okay, let's just have maybe some more there. This is a technique worth practicing on a bit of scrap paper when you're not full flow in the painting if you're not confident of it. Basically it's moist colour going onto dry paper and then I'm softening with a moist brush. And that's all I'm going to do there and stop at that stage. So I'll see you in the next section. So we've got two mountains, distant mountains done and the bleeding away from dark peaks down to the soft valleys. The next section I was to put in these grassy slopes which are quite, you know, a strong yellowish green. Okay, so to do that, let's just mix up our colour first of all. I'm just going to clean, clean my palette down a little bit. It's always worth, you know, cleaning down so that you've got plenty of mixing area and you know, rinse your water often. I use uh, two big, well, sort of a pint water jugs there. You know, you can never have enough clear water with watercolour to keep everything fresh. Try not to use a tiny little pot, you know, with just a little bit of water, but that's just not enough to keep your colours clean and vibrant. So the colour for the grassy slopes is going to be cadmium yellow deep. And again, I'm mixing up quite a big puddle because I've got a lot of area to cover on the painting, okay? So cadmium yellow deep. Then we're going to sort of tame that with raw umber, okay? Which will tame it quite a lot. Actually, let's get some more cadmium yellow, more cadmium yellow deep. Right, so that's sort of like just taking the, st the st sting out of the yellow, okay? Now I want sap green. So hopefully this gives us, um, you know, sort of pleasing grass colour. I fancy I need a bit more of the cadmium yellow deep, so a bit more, yeah, to bring it in. So a bit more. It's all about just, you know, judging colour mixing, you know, as an art in itself, isn't it? So that's why I did some practices before I, you know, before I started. Just have a little go of mixing colours like that, trying to match the colour that you're trying to emulate. So now I need to wet this paper. So clear water, I'm using a, an inch and a half flat brush. I'm going to wet all of this section now. I'm brushing the water in the direction in which the landscape is uh, going and in which direction this, the strokes of the grassy slopes will be going. Okay, so everything's working together. So let's look at that. Right, if I tip my board, let's see, see that? Yeah, you can see the water running down now and starting to gather there and the drips coming off. You know, that's what I mean. That's just too wet. It's just a bit too wet, okay? So what you can do with that is just 
tip the board back up the other way, just zoom out, and just let, and transfer the water, and there we are, share the water around, just give it a minute or so, so that lovely sheen there, just let it all, there is another pedal, see another bead running off there, you want to get rid of those. If you lay it flat for a little while, that'll soak in consistently, okay? And then it literally, it's within a matter of seconds to minutes that you'll either let it go too damp when there's no shine on the paper, and then that's when you don't want to put a wash in because you'll cause a back run, or it being too wet as it was a few seconds ago. So being aware of water and moisture is you know, a key skill in watercolour painting, okay? So let's get this, these colours on now. If I just zoom in a little bit. Okay, so this wash, this wash that I mixed up earlier, you know, it looks really, it's very bright. And this will be the basis for these near slopes okay some of them will eventually have quite strong shadows on so we'll lose a lot of this brightness so don't let it scare you you know it won't all be this color but that's the foundation that you can see peeking through in the photograph okay so now let's, let's neutralize that now, okay, so <clears throat> to neutralize this color, it's a yellowish green. So opposite yellowy green on the color wheel is Windsor Violet. So can you see that's really just taking that down? We don't add to black, we use a complement. Okay. And then I'm painting in now some of the darker sort of gullies that I can see and areas of vegetation. I'm darkening all of that there. There's some streaks here. There's quite a dark passage there. I'm just looking at my photograph where the dark areas are. What I loved about this picture was sort of the sort of sensual curves and things that the shadows were making in the landscape. And so I want to try and mimic that with my brush strokes as I'm putting this colour on. I think that's enough. What I want to do now is let the whole thing, you can see that sheen again, let the whole thing run for a while. Just pick it up at a diagonal like this and let it go. And can you see everything is softening right before your eyes? It's quite magical watercolour. Let's tip it this way now. Let's just have it on the horizontal so it all runs down. So from the broad ragged strokes a few seconds ago, we're now getting soft, you know, really sort of velvety, a soft velvety look in this grassy area in the foreground. So I'm letting it, it's on a vertical, let it all run. Right, I'll be back in the next section. Okay, so I have to go out for a second then. This is still moist. So I want to start lifting out now um, some highlights, okay? So there are some highlights, you know, definitely there, there, there. So we'll lift those out with a thirsty brush. So thirsty brush is a, a wide flat brush that's been moistened really well. Make sure all the air bubbles come out. Shake it free of water and then clean, uh, dry it with a flannel. Tissues aren't very good. I'd use a flannel, okay? So you get it really um, absorbent. Now it'll just take, it'll pick up color really well. So I'm just gonna press it in thickly in some places and then taper it away to a fine line in others. And after each lift, I'm rinsing really well because and reshaping it because if you have it going like that as a twist you know that's going to give you 
not a very good shape so just shape it back to its proper position and then let's have another lift here just press it in really hard and then taper it away make it finer as you come off perhaps just to give these soft soft lifts that are following the contour of the landscape okay let's see there's a bit of a rim a bit of a highlight there so press in and then taper away Quite a lot of highlight there. So it's, it's almost as if you're carving out the colour, carving out from the colour. And this will dry, you know, paler as well than it looks at the moment. It's very strong at the moment, but it'll go a lot paler. Let's have another fatter passage of highlight there. And then Finally, I'm going to go back in to that mix, which was sap green, uh, raw umber, and cadmium yellow deep. And I'm going to add some French ultramarine blue to that. And then drop in a few more shadowy areas in places. Yeah. And one, more, one last time I'm going to lift, uh, tilt that and let those bluey um, those sort of darker marks that I've just put in run. You might need to leave it in this vertical position for quite a while so that the paint gains momentum okay give it time to start running and then little by little it'll soften down but it won't lose too much of the contrast because we need the contrast in this grassy foreground to give us a feeling of you know swathes of green, swathes of yellowy, umber, and then the darker tones, the more neutralised tones that we made with Windsor Violet. Okay, so that's it at this stage. So I'm just going to leave this all dry, okay? See you in the next section. Coming back now to start doing some detail in the tree line and the sort of foreground shadows again. The whole painting is bone dry now and as you can see these grassy slopes have dried back and the colour is a bit more subdued than when it was first going on. So uh, always bear that in mind, you know, it dries a lot paler than, than it does going on. Okay so we're going to try and start unifying the painting now by introducing some of this dark shadow colour into the tree line which will sort of straddle you know the sort of distance with the middle distance and the foreground so the color that we used for those distant sort of shadows in the hills was a mix of sap green french ultramarine blue a bit more blue and a bit more blue again Actually a bit more green. I'm making this quite a big puddle because I needed to do the trees as well as the foreground shadows. So I'd rather mix more than I need. Make sure I've got enough then to do the trees and then carry on with the, the shadows as well in the foreground. And some burnt umber. That was the other colour. Okay, so I'm just going to look at my painting and see how closely that matches that. It's not too bad. It's quite, it's quite similar. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to just add a little a bit more water to some of this mix. I'm dragging some of it away from the main pedal to another part of the palette and drag in some droplets of water that were already on there. Okay, so this is for my first sort of band 
of trees. If I zoom in on this section for you to see this going on. So I'm painting it. I'm just sort of rocking and stippling the brush. I don't want this to be too detailed because this is going to be the first band of trees. And I'll be making them quite pale by laying some tissue on them at some point. So the, the detail isn't important at the moment. I just want them to key in irregularly to the to the uh, grassy slope. So I'm blocking out a lot of the, the little sort of sky holes that appear as I'm creating this. I just zoom in again. Okay, so you, you get the idea. All right. So however you get that look is is fine. It's up to you. You can use a different type of brush. I'm using this half inch flat. And as I say, I'm just sort of rocking it back and forth like that and using little stippling movements within the corner of the brush to get this tree look. We're just making a symbol for a tree, a ridge of trees, basically, aren't we? So that's all. I'm going back to infill there a little bit. All I care about is that I'm getting some irregular, asymmetric shapes that suggest a group of trees. And I'll carry, just do some sort of further down and definitely near the edge there because if we get some right on the edge of the painting, it keeps the viewer's eye nicely in and doesn't let it... Uh, escape out along this swoop uh, sort of, of of hill okay so that's another thing to consider right so there then I'm going to key it in a bit more to the grass and I'll come in a bit more widely in some places than others right. so starting to now you know unify the painting a little bit Again, I'm killing this, this right angle here. I'm killing it with this dark greenish tone and letting that then come down. Okay, let's have some more. And again, this bottom right hand, sorry, let me zoom in. That top right hand corner there and the bottom right hand corner. I'm putting the dark uh, green there so that the eye you know, it saves the eye from running out of the painting at the bottom there. So before those marks get too dry, I'm going to come along with a moist brush. And again, if I zoom in on this one section, I'm going to take this moist brush and soften the dark green passage in in places so that it fuses seamlessly with this more with this yellowy green underneath i'm not going to do it all the way along so it's soft there okay but in the next group i'll leave that have a hard edge leave that alone okay now these trees are showing up really nicely against that misty background so let's have some of these let's just soften off where they key in, in places, and then drag that line away. And the bottom grouping as well. Let's soften that line up into these. Key in with the where the huts uh, are, the sort of houses, sort of cabins there. So that's a bit softer. And then that line's a bit hard, so let's just soften underneath with a moist brush. Encourage, the, you know, the line to melt, this hard line that's starting to form, encourage it to melt by, uh, you know, 
rubbing the brush back and forth and then tapering away that line. So we're starting to key everything in now. That's a bit hard, so we'll soften that one as well. So it's a mixture of sort of hard and soft edges in this darker green colour that I've put on. Okay, now for the little huts, the little cabins, sorry, I'm just going to use the same green that I used to do the trees. Sorry, let's zoom in on that. Okay, so it was sap green, burnt timber, and French ultramarine blue. So they're just very basic shapes. There's not a lot, you can't see a lot of detail in this. So I'm not putting a lot of detail in because I don't want to get too fussy with these shapes. And I want them to cast some lovely strong shadows like this. Over and then blend those shadows in up into the green shadows that we already put in. Actually, let's have them rolling over there a little bit. Okay, and these would be these trees. The trees there would be casting um, some shadows as well. So. I'll, taper them off a little bit to, to mimic the pointy nature of the pine trees there. And we'll have them maybe bending a little bit to suggest, you know, the undulating land that it's on. So we're starting to get some strong cast shadows there now. Similarly with some of these, let's take some shadows sort of horizontally across the picture plane. And here and there. I'm not doing all of them, but just enough to suggest the strong sunlight in parts of the painting. Okay, I'm going to go back in to the right hand side of the mountain and put some now, uh, this is wet on dry colour going down there. And again, just soften that off a little bit and a little bit more repeating some of those peaks we did earlier on just so that there's a little bit more contrast and then a scratchy dry brush just dragging the hairs you know, parallel like that so I'm picking up some colour and I'm literally holding the brush very flat and dragging it just to get some texture on the middle distance uh, peak mountain, like that. And if any of the marks are a little bit too scratchy, just come along with a moist brush and soften them in again. I'm going to blend those away to nothing at the bottom where they go down into the mist again. That needs to tie in with the ground a little bit more. And I'm tapering, tapering that off like that. Okay, so I'm happy with the way those buildings are just a little suggestion of human presence there. Let's have a few little, just little marks suggesting some little bushes so that they aren't a stark shape with nothing around them, okay? So there's that little grouping. Okay, so looking at it now. Okay, I think what we need next are some stronger passages of colour here again. So more colour, sap green, burnt umber, and French ultramarine blue. OK, 
it and I'll just close the camera and come back in, in the next section. Okay, what I want to do to some of these middle distance trees before they dry completely is just pat them with a piece of tissue paper, so dry tissue paper. I'm just going to lay it on the ridge there and then press in with my thumb to take out some colour. Yeah. Okay, so as you can see now, if I zoom out, they are getting a sort of misty look on them as well. All right, so that's that's useful now for if we want to go back in, as I will in a second, and add some, some stronger trees on top. So let's do that now. So we'll go back in and just make some taller ones and place them here and there in front of the shadowy ones that you just lifted out. So it gives us another, another band of trees. And as I say, these ones are slightly bigger and they might come more into the foreground. So this one's creeping a little bit further and actually going to let it overlap with the at the border of the painting there so that one's coming closer and let's have another one next to it drop some more of that dark in there as well and a bit darker on the house as well so that, I'll just key that in a bit there. Put some tiny details in there. there. And then this little cluster at the bottom. Let's have one really tall one there. Some little sort of cross branches right at the top and then fatter. At the base. So that cast shadow is really nice and believable there now. So let's have that strong gully redone with this darker green one more time. And some more in this corner, a bit of an irregular shape there, which I'll soften off now with a moist brush. So softening all of that into the previous paler wash. I keep rinsing my size 3 brush all the time and then touch into the edge of the darker colour I've just put in. Also, I think I'll soften that one down a little bit more. This my brush, this needs softening in. I'm just scanning and seeing what jumps out. That's a bit hard, so let's blend that out a bit more with a moist brush and then a few strokes there okay I think you know we could sort of stop there because we can go on and on and on adding more and more you know layers and details but I think as an exercise for using green and getting getting uh, the feeling of mist and then different swathes of, of grass I think we've sort of done enough there okay and lifting colour so I hope you've enjoyed that
I'm just going to stop the camera. I'm just going to show you now. Um, I'll dry it and I'll peel off the edge because it always looks a lot better then. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, so lastly, let's just peel off the masking tape now. Some of the some of the paint has seeped underneath a little bit, unfortunately. That's a better edge there. That really gives you a nice crisp edge. I tear, a, tear away from the painting rather than tearing over the painting because of course you could lift off a nice tongue of white paper right through that you work if you're not careful. So tear away obviously from your painting. Okay. Right, so that's, that's a bit easier to sort of assess and judge you now. So if I just zoom in on pla in places and get a better angle. Okay, so the shad let's start from the back. So the shadowy you know, effect of the um, the mist in the hills there was done by using the graded wash wet into wet. And then the shadows from your clumps of pine trees, I think they add a little something. And we did the sort of shadowy trees first, which we patted with the tissue. Then we went on top with the darker trees. We've got two layers of trees. The houses, uh, cabins are just very suggestive. They're, they're not really detailed. Then again, here's another section of um, Misty Mountain with, sorry, Misty Mountain with gra gradation from the top of the mountain going down to practically the white of the paper behind the first layer of trees which again I patted with a tissue and then added a stronger tree right in front and then softened underneath that so it bled into the yellowy green of the grass. Also I used some dry brush, a scratchy dry brush dragging it across the mountain there to get a bit more texture. And then the, the main sweep of trees using that uh, overlapping technique of laying a, a dilute wash of the tree line in first, very ragged and uh, impressionistic, then patting that with a tissue and then adding the darker trees in front with just stronger colour of the same mix. Okay, So it's all about contrast, contrast between light and dark, contrast between hard edges and soft edges and then the foreground just comes in um, it's warmer obviously because there's more yellow in there and but there's there's a fusion there's a sort of color harmony between this green of the peak the same green is used in the trees and the cabins the same green is used in the shadows of the gullies and the grass and the undulations of the land so hopefully it all holds together well enough Okay, so thanks for watching and if you've got any questions on, you know, paper, paints or technique, etc, just put a uh, comment in the box underneath. Okay, bye for now.